This is going to be Bible references on the shadow of death. If you look at Job chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. So the shadow of death is associated with darkness, has the ability to stain, also associated with a cloud and blackness. It looks like it is associated with death in Job 10:20 20 through 22. It says, Are not my days few? Seize then and let me alone, that I may take comfort a little. Before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. And these verses show it can refer to physical death. Job 16:16 16, 16 through 18 says, My face is foul with weeping, and on my eyelids is the shadow of death, not for any injustice in mine hands. Also my prayer is pure, O earth. Cover not thou my blood, and let my cry have no place. So it sometimes refers to physical death. Also, it seems to show up with the tribulation in the context. And if you've read the book of Job, you know Job pictures a Jewish saint going through the tribulation. And that is why it occurs so much in the book of Job. Not only can it refer to physical death, but also refers to something in the sky during the tribulation. Although I'm not sure if it is a machine or just a cloud or whatever it is, but it's something that moves across the sky, making a shadow during that future time of Jacob's trouble. Isaiah 9-2 says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Notice the verse calls it the land of the shadow of death. And Psalms 23 refers to it as a valley. So it is an actual place with an actual shadow on the ground because of something overhead in the sky. So there is a land covered with this shadow. Psalms 44, 19 says, Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death. I take the Bible as literal and I believe every word, so I believe that's referring to literal dragons. So men will be covered by the shadow, possibly with dragons in the midst. And you see Hollywood copies, stuff like this with movies like Pitch Black where you have monsters lurking around in the darkness coming after people. And Jeremiah thirteen sixteen says, Give glory to the Lord your God before he caused darkness. And before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains, and while you look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death, and make it gross darkness. So you have the shadow of death being the opposite of light, associated with darkness, and it's associated with judgment. Both connected with the tribulation, darkness and judgment. So this thing in the sky is large enough to cast a shadow and it seems to come up out of the earth. If you look at Job 28, 1 through 3, it says, Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness. He searcheth out all perfection, the stones of darkness and the shadow of death. The Bible definitely implies this shadow of death is some type of machine because Job says it has doors. Job 38, 17 says, Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or, how, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Notice it says doors. It has more than one door. Doors in the plural. Remember, Noah's Ark had only one door. To get in. Noah's Ark foreshadowing Jesus Christ who is the one and only way to heaven. He's the only door. There is only one way to be saved and that's through the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15.
Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the only way to heaven is to put your trust in that. Any other door you choose takes you to death and hell. And there is definitely more than one door to death. There are many doors to death. And the shadow of death has doors. Uh, way back before I had hardly even picked up a Bible, I watched a movie called Independence Day. And the movie showed a giant UFO in the sky that covered a city. As it was covering the city, you could see a shadow going over the city. And you hear many conspiracy theorists talk about predictive programming. This is where the elite or Satan will place references to a future catastrophe or event into popular media, into the movies and music. And this is done to soften up or desensitize the public to better accept some, something or catastrophe coming in the future. I believe Satan has to get permission from God before he does anything. Also in the Bible, God will use the devil or false prophets or lying spirits to bring judgment on a people for disobeying and being in constant rebellion. This is why he does give Satan permission to do certain things. And with that being said, I believe movies like Independence Day is nothing but Satan showing his plans for a future time and the future time of Jacob's trouble. Although it won't be aliens coming from outer space, but actually Satan and the Antichrist henchmen, the workers of iniquity, along with fallen angels and devils, the ones who are wrecking havoc on the earth. But you will see many movies with something overhead in the sky that is killing people on the earth. This thing in the movies always seems to cast a shadow. So it is large enough to cast a shadow over the land and it comes up out of the earth. Unlike how in the movies it comes from outer space. Although in movies like War of the Worlds you do have things coming up out of the ground. But Job 12.22 says he discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. God can bring to light the shadow of death. Referring to physical death, Jesus Christ conquered death. And we conquer it at the rapture through him. But he also brings to light this death machine in the time of Jacob's trouble. And if you look at Psalms 23, 1 through 6, you see one of the most popular parts of the entire Bible. A lot of people have this memorized. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Many people have these verses memorized, but don't realize these verses are referring to the future tribulation involving the shadow of death and then the millennium after the tribulation where God has his people lie down in green pastures after the pastures and grass have been restored. And verse 5 talks about God preparing a table in the presence of mine enemies. God will have enemies during the millennial reign who form a army with Satan that's as large and as many in number as the sand in the, of the sea. And God's people will walk, walk through the valley of the shadow of death in the tribulation, but won't fear because God protects them. And in Psalms 107, you see where the shadow of death is once again associated with iron, implying it could be some type of machine. Also, looking at the word iron in the Bible, it seems to be in a very negative, negative light. Psalms 107.10 says, Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Psalms 107.14, He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. 
So you see the shadow of death associated with darkness and iron once again. And then in Amos 5.8 it says, Seek him that make the seven stars in Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. So it's saying, Seek him, seek the God of the Bible, that turns the shadow of death into the morning. The shadow of death turning into the morning has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ bringing in the millennial kingdom after the tribulation. And Job 24, 17 says, For the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. If one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. You can see Jesus Christ is the morning star. And the verse said, For the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. Jesus Christ is the morning star in Revelation 22:16. To them he will be a dread, just as much as they dreaded the shadow of death, the death machine in the sky. Like the shadow of death, the Lord Jesus Christ also comes with a cloud at the second coming. He comes to thresh the heathen. The Bible says the blood will be up to the horse's bridles. He will no doubt kill more than the shadow of death killed. Revelation 14.14 14 says, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And then Revelation 1.7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. So it looks like the Bible is implying the shadow of death is an actual cloud or some type of machine or thing of iron with doors that is associated with darkness. This machine kills men during the time of Jacob's trouble. You can already see today where men are leaving chemtrails in the sky that are harmful to men. And to many this will seem like a sci-fi fantasy. But that is because they are the ones who have watched too many sci-fi fantasy movies. The Bible says there is no new thing under the sun. The things in these movies have already been written in the Bible. Satan knows the Bible. And he is the one behind Hollywood and the movies that people love. But I hope this has gave you a better idea of what the shadow of death is and gave you an interest in the further study to this topic.